YouTubers, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy burp cloth. These come in handy for so many reasons. They make great gifts and they are fun to make. You'll need terry cloth and some cotton with a fun print. I cut mine out to be 18 inches by 10 inches, so when you fold and cut along the width, I can get two burp cloths plus two pieces to make cuddle cubes. You can watch how to make those in the link at the end of this video. You can use an old towel for this to make it more eco-friendly, but I get it by the yard because I use terry cloth a lot. Place your main piece right side down on top of the terry cloth and cut around it. You can cut it to size, but it can shift around while you're sewing, plus we'll trim it down later so this is a little easier. Pin it all together and make sure to smooth the top piece as you pin, starting from one side to the other. Then stitch around the edge with a half inch seam allowance and leave a three inch gap to turn it right side out. I'm using the edge of my presser foot as a guide. Don't forget to back stitch when you start sewing. When you get to the corners, leave the needle down, raise your presser foot, pivot the fabric, Lower the presser foot and continue sewing. Here's a story no one asked for. When one of my nephews was first born, I was holding him after he had just eaten, and I was so excited because he was smiling up at me. I leaned down and was talking to him, and he projectile vomited right into my mouth. This is horrifying for two reasons. One, it was my sister's breast milk, and two, I am lactose intolerant. A burp cloth would not have helped in this situation. I have four nephews and they are the best ever. It's crazy how different they are. I had one vomit on me, one poop on me, and one pee on me. And one who was born during COVID that I don't really see very much, so he's mostly scared of me. I like to put my finger right where I started stitching so I can eye up how big I want that opening to be. It just makes it a little easier. And don't forget to back stitch. Grab a ruler and a rotary cutter. Place the ruler along one edge of the printed cotton and trim off any extra fabric. Trim all four corners at an angle. This will help everything lay flat. Turn it right side out and poke out all four corners. I like to iron it because it's a little easier to top stitch since it's not as puffy. Make sure you tuck in the raw edges of the opening. Pick a coordinating color for the top stitching. Top stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. I move my needle over and then use the edge of the presser foot as a guide. Thank you. 
Make sure you catch the raw edges of the opening in the top stitching. check when I finish that section so I know if I have to go back and fix it. Make sure you sew right over where you started so it looks continuous and backstitch to lock the stitches in place. By now you will have fuzzies from the terry cloth everywhere, no lie. Snip off the loose threads from the front and the back, and that's it! You can see the top stitching added a decorative touch as well as closed up that gap nicely. I like to lint roller mine to get some fuzzies off and give it another press with the iron. I fold them up and put my branding on them and they're ready to go for my next craft show.